In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get your video looking from this to this. This color grading technique feels, it feels like cheating. Uh, next, I will be showing you how to work with log footage, uh, almost like you would be working with raw footage. So we'll be fixing white balance and exposure rather accurately. And then I'll show you a technique in After Effects with which you can kind of go back in time and uh, fix lighting issues that you maybe didn't have the possibility or maybe you didn't have the time to fix on set and we're going to fix it on post. And uh, I will be using the color correction kit to do the raw processing part, so fixing white balance and exposure, and then we'll do some uh, tricks in After Effects. But I will be trying to keep the After Effects amount, After Effects tutorial part as minimum as possible. Okay, we'll start off in Premiere. So we'll have the footage here in Premiere. So if we apply a lookup table to this footage, uh, maybe try and fix it a bit. You can see that it's quite kind of, there's a lot of contrast. Uh, these shadows are black and the highlight area on the back is uh, like really bright. So there's a lot of contrast in the footage. So, uh, and if we just bring the saturation, I mean the uh, contrast down, it, well, it helps a bit, but it's still, it isn't filmic. So let's uh, fix this. Oh, like let's just start grading. So, um, because in Premiere, it's easy to go to After Effects uh, with the dynamic link. I'll do that. Uh, where is it? Edit clip in order, uh, no this replace with After Effects composition. But actually, before we go there, let's just choose the one that we uh, choose, just just the area that we want to work with. So here is this, this guy is looking up. So maybe it's a, maybe it's a scene where there's some, someone ca coming in. So we'll uh, start from here and then uh, just until he looks up and then we want to see who he is looking. So let's just create this short, just this short clip in After Effects. So, now I've trimmed it, I'll go to After Effects. And here, I'm gonna do the After Effects kind of uh, magic part. And that is, we're going to separate the foreground and the background. There was this, there's this difference between the background and the foreground. The background is much brighter than the foreground. And then there's a white balance difference. So I wanna fix that, but if I'm gonna fix it with this, for example, if I would fix the background by giving it a bit, a bit more magenta and making it warmer, I would make this warmer as well. And I don't want that. So I wanna fix it separately. So that's why I'm going to cut them off. So I'm gonna cut the foreground from the background. And to do that, in After Effects, you go to the clip, uh, you choose the clip that you're working on, you double click it, and then here you go to Rotoscope, a uh, Roto Brush tool. And here, um, you and by the way you have to go to windows and brush where is it brushes so it's here already so this one and from here you choose the uh, right size for your brush so in this case because I'm working with full HD footage this is okay and I then I just uh, draw and tell after effects what I want to be part of the foreground so I'm just gonna draw a line simply like this and the, this part is quite tricky because it doesn't, well, let me see. Okay, so now it draw this uh, um, magenta line to the uh, area that, that, uh, that the After Effects thinks that I want to be in the foreground. Let me, by the way, make this bit bigger so it's easier for me to work and for you to see. Uh, but it took this background as well. So I don't want that. So I'm gonna tell After Effects more clues. So I'm gonna press down Alt and draw red areas to where I don't want uh, to be part of my uh, selection. So like that, that's quite good. And this part I want it to be as well. And I don't want this part to be in it. So that's quite good. And there, let's just take this. That's good. Okay. Now we have told After Effects what is, what do we want in the foreground and what do we don't want in the foreground. And well, let's, let's, let's just do this a very, um, let's be very uh, exact. So I want this part to be there as well. Uh, let's see what else. This is good. The hair looks good. That's good. There we have a bit of... Um, and by the way, by pressing option uh, W, I go into the rotor brush mode. And then when I press H, I go to the hand mode. And I just go and go through the uh, clip looking for things that we missed. Okay, and then um, just, just for fun, 
I'm going to show you another tool that you can uh, really dial in the selection by using the Refine Edge tool. And here I'll just draw like an edge. Uh, I will just give after I, I will ask After Effects to be re really careful with this area. So now After Effects will kind of uh, cut all individual hairs uh, from from the background. So this is uh, After Effects is going to do a lot of work for us. Okay, and now that it has uh, done this uh, for the first frame, uh, here's this kind of uh, area. And I'm going to spread this area all the way to the end of our clip, somewhere there. And then starts a very tedious process of me kind of supervising After Effects that it's doing the right job. So this means that I will uh, forward fun one frame and then fix if After Effects, because the image is moving. So if After Effects fails to kind of do the right selection, I will give, it, give After Effects more hints. So I will give you, I will show you a few frames, how I do it, but then, well, it's the same thing repetitively uh, until the whole clip is done. So now uh, to go to the next frame, I'll simply pre press down command or control on PC and I press left uh, arrow and it takes some time for the uh, frame to update. And then I just simply go and check that the magenta line is where it's supposed to be, looks good. And then I'll go one more frame forward and it takes some time for it to update and there it goes. And now I'll just do the same thing until I'm uh, kind of done the whole thing to each frame. So this will take time, but you don't have to follow me because you can just fast forward. Let's go. Okay, so we did it. Um, this time this was like exceptionally easy, maybe because there was so so uh, clear difference between the foreground and the background. The background had a bit of a blur, the foreground was nice and sharp, there was an exposure difference and there was uh, like a bit of a white balance difference. So After Effects was uh, like doing an incredibly good job of uh, getting the um, kind of the foreground crapped from the background. It's not this easy normally, so don't get your hopes up. Well, anyway, now that we have supervised the whole thing, we'll go to the, this button here and we uh, press freeze. And this will now kind of go and with the scissors go and cut all the individual frames from the backgrounds. Okay, so now After Effects has done its job. And if I go back to the uh, composition and let's, let's just show this. Now you can see that we only have the foreground and just take a look at this. If we zoom in all the way to the hairs, you can see that all the individual hairs have been cut out. So After Effects has been doing like an incredibly uh, detailed job at this. And then we'll um, export this out from uh, After Effects. So I'm just gonna add this to render queue. And for the codec, I need to uh, uh, choose something that has the alpha channel because uh, the checker uh, pattern is uh, invisible part of the footage so we don't want if we're gonna overlay this on top of another footage uh, we have to choose a codec that has alpha uh, and if you don't have this um, you simply click here and then you choose for example QuickTime and uh, or some other let me think well if you don't if you have Windows and you don't have ProRes just Google uh, intermediate codec with alpha and then you choose RGB plus alpha like this okay and then you choose the location for your uh, render and then you just render. Okay, now After Effects did its rendering. So next we're gonna import the footage to Premiere. So let's find it, this one. And then I'll just overlay it on top of this. We don't need the sound, so I'm gonna re remove it. And here we have the background and the foreground and here we have only the foreground. So now we have the possibility to kind of uh, manipulate the foreground and the background separately. So um, to see what we're doing, I'm going to color correct this first. And by, I'm going to do it by adding an adjustment layer on top of everything. So now I'm going to apply a color correction kit, uh, like Film Gamma 3 maybe in this case. Yeah, let's use Film Gamma 3. And then I'll just color correct it a bit to make it look good. And in this case, I'm, a, I'm going to actually look only to the foreground. So just this guy. So I'm gonna make uh, that look good. So let's see, maybe something like that. And now 
we have the possibility to go to the background layer and apply uh, lookup tables to fix that. So, because it's um, so there's such a big difference, it's um, it's better to use a lookup table. And there's a look uh, in the color correction kit. There are these lookup tables with which you can correct, uh, for example, uh, exposure. So now I can just uh, I choose the uh, exposure minus a lookup table from the color correction kit, and with this I can kind of slide where I want the uh, background to be. And I want the person to kind of um, pay attention to the foreground, so I'll bring the exposure down quite a lot. And then I'm going to apply another lookup table. And let's reset this, let's give this name, let's give this exposure. And let's call this one, let's call it white balance. And here on the white balance, I'll go and choose its bit, uh, um, like cool, so I'm going to add a bit of warmth. Not that much though, so let's bring it down. So something like that. Okay, and now you can see the difference if uh, I uh, take the white balance correction off and on. I think it's a bit too much still, so let's go back and bring it to like the 20. And then here you can see the exposure difference. So then the next trick, next trick that I want to show you is boosting shadows. In this case, I think I want to do it uh, only to the foreground. So to boost shadows, kind of like lift the shadows up, and this is kind of doing a bit of a, like exposure blending. Um, I'll just use the Lumetri uh, panel's HSL secondary effect, and I'm going to do a mask to target only uh, the shadow areas. So something like this. And uh, let me just show it to you. So I'm just trying to target the shadow areas, and I'll give it a nice knee. Bring it down a bit more, something like that. And then I'll give it a nice blur to kind of make it not so visible. And it's 30, but I want more. So I'm gonna, just going to crank it up until I get where I want to be, like 40. And then I'll just fine tune the selection. So let's say that's good. OK, press that off. And then I'll press this triangle. And then I'll just uh, start pushing the shadows up. Uh, until I have the look that I want. So not, let's not push it too much. That's quite okay. So now you can see this kind of like shadow boost that we gave to the uh, foreground. And um, I'll give this a name. Let's call it shadow boost. Next thing I'm going to give this a nice, with the curves effect, I'm going to give this a nice filmic look. So I'm going to lift the end tail of the curves up and I'm going to bring the top one just a bit down and then I'm going to make this kind of an S-curve, so kind of recovering the contrast uh, in the middle part. So here the shadows are lift and here the sh uh, highlights are a bit uh, brought down, so, but the middle part is still uh, has the same contrast as we started. So here you can see the before and after. It's kind of giving that kind of a bit of a filmic look to it. And then to give it a nice filmic rate, uh, actually let's call this, let's call this uh, uh, shadow, shadow lift. Anyway, so let's copy the effect and I'll reset it to kind of have a clean plate. And then I'm going to go to the uh, creative tab. And by the way, when I'm working with this, so this I'm going to give this a name called grade. So now this one is always, this panel is always working with the lowest one. So if I want to work with the lift one, I have to uh, access all the settings from the effects control panel. But if I want to use this with the panel, I have to have it the lowest. As you can see, great. And here it reads great as well. So now I'm going to give it um, a, like a lookup table to give it a nice look. And I'm going to use a lookup table that I have created. I have been starting to create these kind of creative lookup tables. I'm going to just create, use this one. Like this is too strong, so I'm going to just bring it down a bit, like to 50. And there's our kind of uh, look for the uh, clip. And then the next thing that I want to show you is to do, um, I want to kind of give it some kind of a nice um, desaturated look. Like often in films, they have a desaturated look. And let me give you, like, show you a quick technique how you can do it. Um, I'll choose all of these and then I'll nest it. And let's give it, just name a clip. And then I'm going to double, um, uh, put the same clip on top of itself. And, and to give this desaturated look, 
I like to use this technique that I've learned from one Photoshop tutorial and it goes like this. In the below clip you remove all saturation and then on the top clip you put the clip to soft light blending mode like this and then you can go and choose how much of this effect you want by going to the uh, lower one and uh, removing a bit of the uh, uh, what is the, the the opacity of the lower uh, lower clip so if i put it all the way to zero it's basically no effect but if i give it for example 35 percent it takes uh, that saturation nicely away okay so i think we're done with the clip so let's compare it to the original clip so i'm gonna bring the original clip from here and I'm gonna copy it here and let's put it on top and let's reset all these things that we have done to it and let's just apply just one lookup table to the footage and here here's the original and here's our like filmic look original filmic look that was the end of this tutorial and if you want to know more about the color correction kit and all these lookup tables that I used in this uh, tutorial you can find more information about it in here I guess yes you can find it there okay other than that see you in the next video bye